Ajay Srivastava is CEO of Dimensions Corporate Finance Services. He's joining us now to take some questions. Ajay, good to have you with us here. Great uh, speaking with you as always. Prashant, this side. I mean, uh, almost back knocking at uh, the earlier highs, uh, Ajay. Bank Nifty almost got there. Nifty uh, still about 2% or so away. Uh, what's your sense, Ajay? How are things looking? I think things are looking wonderful, Prashant. They can't look better because uh, I think there are enough buyers for people who want to book profits. And there are enough uh, stocks available in the market at uh, you know some reasonable valuations for to balance some of your portfolio. So I think it's a mixed bag at this point of time. For people, it's comfortable because at the end of the day, it's not a runaway kind of a situation. But the fact is that segments of, as the results have shown, segments of our economy are doing well, companies are doing well. A large segment of our companies are not doing well. So I think this is going to be a really <clears throat> tough stock picking market where calls will have to be made. And it's not portfolio is not going to perform, but if you need to be very stock specific in this market, because there's going to be wide divergent of performance as we come along in the next six to nine months. And I think that's where the trick is going to be that whether the sectors you have picked up perform versus sectors you've dropped out or the other way around. And I think uh, that is where a couple of calls of the economy may, may come in handy to say this kind of segment will work very well. This is not going to work or it's already seeing a slowdown. So I think it's clearly a choice between stocks. It's not going to be market-driven rallies. It's going to be a stock-driven performance of your portfolios. Okay. Hi, Ajay. Uh, good morning. Good Always morning. Great to, to listen to you. <coughs> so stock-driven market, what stocks do you have your eye on? I know I'm asking you like this umbrella question, but uh, <laughs> let, let's go with earnings season, right? Is there anything that really stood out for you in terms of a trend or a performance from an individual company? So these new guys, the new age folks, they have been taught by the public market, for instance, to look at profits. And we're seeing Zomato do that, at least promise that. PB Fintech today is really reducing its losses at the bottom line quite a bit. Any interest here? Yeah, I have, you know, I keep saying that, yes, we have interest. We have been buying up these stocks at every correction. But as I said, always for me that as an investor, I would like to create a portfolio just like a PE fund. Because I do not know which one of them may tomorrow collapse at the end of the day because of a very short history of performance. And, you know, the number two is what I don't like about these companies is they're still fooling the public with a concept called adjusted EBITDA. That term should be banned. This is not adjusted EBITDA. <laughs> All they're trying to hide is that what the employees and the, they're taking away from you as a shareholder. That term should be banned, actually banned, and companies should be fined about writing what is adjusted EBITDA. Your people cost is your cost at the end of the day. You're given stock option at yeah. 10 rupees for a share which is for 600 rupees. That's a real cost. So, you know, apart from that, accounting obfuscation, yes, I think sanity has prevailed. Some of these companies have great business models for a longer-term scenario for to capture India's growth market. And we've already seen what's happened in the payment market. And insurance company has rightly said it's done well. So, yes, we are buyers. We hold shares. And I think it's going to continue to be a good story to unfold because this discipline which came in this year is going to come in very handy for people who are coming now. You know, good luck to uh, Mr. SoftBank who bought at some absurd valuation of the shares. That's his problem. You got a chance to buy some of the stocks at a good valuation. So retail investors build a portfolio. is going to do well over a period of time. You've got to be patient with them sometimes. But if you leave on the accounting obfuscation, I think they're doing reasonably okay in the circumstance that we are in. And they're eating market share. That's the best part. Every day, every day, they eat market share, which means that nobody else can compete in the space with them for a very long time. So I think good story, build a portfolio, steadily buy at corrections, don't get euphoric. They will have bad days as well. But focus only on consumer-facing. That's what I keep saying. The B2B story is a very difficult story to beat, you know, get into it. So focus on the consumer stories and focus on the one which can, you know, intermediating. They don't own the product. Like I would just uh, distinguish between, uh, say, a PV Fentech, which is a distributor, or a Paytm is a distributor, compared to a Nika, which decided to own the product. They want to own a fashion line, own a cosmetic. Now, that's a ridiculous strategy. You don't want to buy those kind of companies who want to become like a, a retailing company. Retailing companies die by the death. You saw that the Bella retail would happen. So don't buy into a new age company, which is now trying to become a retail company. That's a disaster. Buy a new age company, which is a pure distributor. Hmm, interesting thoughts there. Of course, uh, uh, distribution is always up for disruption as well, which is why it's an interesting space, right? We're, we keep hearing about this ONDC and how you'll get cheaper food delivery on ONDC. But I guess, you know, it, it's evolving technology and we need to see how it plays out. Uh, that's, that's on new age. Uh, let's talk about old economy. Let me take you to the other extreme end of the spectrum now. 
Uh, old economy has been interesting. Capital goods stocks have been going through the roof. Numbers are good. And then, of course, Siemens comes in and uh, throws this googly. Uh, but that apart, what are you buying in old economy, if anything? See, I'm not buying, you know, to be honest, we're buying some of the stocks which have a restructuring story. We some of the stocks which are repositioning from global market to domestic market. We bought into a stock which is a very beautiful consumer brand name, not a very good pedigree promoter, but focus exclusively on exports, wants to not come into India, which is in furnishing, etc. So I think there are stories building up in the market. And as far as you know, just mentioned capital goods, I think it's a very good story. But if you're going to buy at these valuations, I think you're going to have very tough to make returns. They can be very good stories. Telecom is a great story because everybody uses telecom, right? But it never gave a return to the shareholders. If you're buying capital goods stocks, I think at these valuations, you may be disappointed at the end of the year that your returns may have been less than you know what you expect it to be. And the Siemens, I think it's a disaster. I think it needs to be stopped. Government needs to step in. You just cannot take over businesses from a listed company and say, I want to hold it in a private company. It's happened in Maruti before. It's happening in this company again. I think as a fundamentally government policy, that needs to be stopped. It doesn't matter, you know, you have a valuation, you point to consulting agencies who are beholden to you globally and they'll give you a very convenient report or valuation. You don't need to take away from public shareholders. I think that's the story in Siemens and the market has correctly penalized them for that, what they're trying to do. And I hope their government stops them from doing it. But story is good, but buy carefully. Valuations are very elevated. You're talking about P's of 70s and 80s in a capital goods sector. It can continue for some time, like Nestle, but very difficult to make returns then. So my suggestion would be keep it on the radar, buy when you correct it. These valuations are not going to give you a very good return, even though the sector will do well. <coughs> All right. Hi, Ajay. Good morning. Uh, Ajay, what good about morning. tech? What about tech? You know, everyone's talking about all those fears, Infosys, the numbers were disappointing, a couple of other scares we got. That index is moving from strength to strength. Uh, what's your view on that space? See, the view on that space is, Nigel, that look at the market in the last one year. You always made money when you bought at when the fear was the highest. When everybody is selling out, you bought the most. Look at the commodity stocks, look at banks, look at anything in the world. You know, so I think it's an oversold sector. I think it's an under-invested uh, sector today. Leverage is sold off. It's a high cash flow sector. Yes, there will be disruptions. Yes, you will have for negative surprises. But as a sector, I think it has been corrected quite rapidly. Maybe it will correct more. I'm not saying national. It may not correct more. Most likely it will correct more by the next quarter. But you've got to start building your portfolio somewhere. In our view, it's a good purchase, good buy. You're getting good cash from the table for dividend buyback. Businesses will go up and down. Commodity businesses do the same. No, don't worry about it. They will do up and down. Companies are very strong. And number three, given the employment situation, their leverage has gone up now, which means no more employee arm twisting to say, give me increases or I walk. I think that is, and that's the biggest cost. 40% or 50% of the cost is people. You got that under control. You got the margin. So my guess is what's going to happen is you might find sales muted, but you will find, I think, operating margins going up over the next year. So great place, good cash to come back. Margins are going to be higher. Sales may disappoint you, but don't worry. Good margins are on the way. <coughs> mm. Ajay, uh, tell us what are you trading? Give us some tra uh, give us some uh, color on that. <laughs> what do you like? Uh, <laughs> you know, short term. I mean, you 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 got a keen eye on uh, that part as well. Where is uh, you know catching uh, momentum and uh, what's happening there in that part of the no, portfolio? I yeah. I think the, you know, the uh, Dani Group's meltdown gave us a good opportunity. So that's coming in good at this point of time, at the, you know. But by and large, our portfolio is mostly short than long at this point of time. There are more shorts in this case than long. Everything which is consumer facing on discretionary side, everything except the upper end. As I keep saying, leave aside hotels and leave aside uh, uh, airline. Everything else is short in our portfolio at this point of time because I think. My personal view, maybe wrong totally, market can do it to me, is that the consumer slowdown which is happening in the market is still not visible in the stock market at this point of time. And uh, I think you will see a lot more. So consumer-facing companies, including India's largest uh, company, I think is on a short right now at this point of time. So this point of time, our ability is to find reasons to sell, not reasons to buy, and reasons to find that wherever the consumer-facing optimism is in the stocks, short it. I think that's a maybe more sensible strategy. Time will tell, market will tell, but that's a strategy. All consumer facing, middle class, lower income group, product facing companies is a short at this point of time, not a buy. Okay. 
well, uh, short the middle class. I mean, that's short, <laughs> short the, the middle class. Exposed to <laughs> exposed to middle class and lower end is what he, as I said. But of course, uh, and of course, higher end continues to do well. Hotels, etc. I mean, uh, so. Uh, take that. And you maintain that for some time, Ajay, that uh, that's the way to kind of uh, go about uh, looking at this uh, space. Uh, just one last question, if we have time, uh, Ajay. On it, it, this entire, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, manufacturing story, especially the contract manufacturing on the electronic side, you know, Dixon, Amber, uh, Sirma, there's a new, new company, Keynes, uh, new in the listed space. Any thoughts? Do you own any of them? I own nothing. You know, as a policy, we never own a stock which is single-digit EBITDA by and large because that's a disaster. Single-digit EBITDA don't make you return even on a fixed deposit rate at the end of the day. So if a company is making 8% EBITDA, I might as well put the money in the bank. So yeah, sure, some shares can do well, some can do very well. But anybody who makes a single-digit EBITDA in India's environment, I think it's a go. That's one. Number two is if you depend on government subsidies, I think you're asking for trouble at the end of the day. I'm not saying government is at fault, but whatever it is, it's not worth it. So I think single-digit EBITDA combined by the focus on subsidy-driven businesses is absolutely mm -hmm. no-go for us. We like people to compete in the market and make money, but single-digit EBITDA, who does that kind of business? I think it's, I don't know, maybe Tata like to do it. They want to get into assembly, but I'm not doing anything sensible guy who wants to do single-digit EBITDA businesses. All right. Uh, thanks, Ajay, for joining in. Always appreciate your thoughts. Sometimes stocks do a thing of their own, right? Well, 